hello viewers here welcome to your show my show our show the digging deep show thank you for tuning in to our sponsors uh we thank you for sponsoring this program without you the digging deep show will not dig this deeper as you are aware if you, are, you have been with us and if you're just joining us the digging deep show launched a cardiovascular awareness campaign heart awareness campaign and we have decided to invite a guest in our studios today from Stroke Association and uh, Madam, please introduce yourself. Welcome. Hello, thank you for inviting me, Kuzi. Um, my name is Dawn Carr. I'm the Community Development uh, Project Leader for the Stroke Association. And what mm. that means is I really go out into the community to raise awareness of stroke and also to prevent stroke as well. What is stroke? Oh, well, basically what a stroke is, it's disruption to the blood supply. And this disruption is, can be caused by either a blockage in the artery or by a bleed in the brain. And when that disruption to the blood supply in the brain occurs, it causes damage to the brain cells and that's what causes a stroke. Um, the, the effects of the stroke can be different for everybody. So for some people, that damage can cause um, you know, an effect on their bodily functions, i.e. unable to use one side of their body, mm. visual impairment, or it could be uh, other issues related to uh, speaking, writing and communicating, which we call aphasia. Some people have, uh, have their swallowing affected and unable to swallow anymore. And uh, other, other factors that can affect stroke survivors is cognitive issues. So they can um, develop anxiety, um, mm -hmm. also develop um, depression and you know, things like that. Uh, people of Afro Caribbean origin, why? Uh, what do they need to know, particularly about stroke, and why do they need to be aware of? Okay, there are approximately about 152,000 people across the UK who are living who've had a stroke. 152. Yeah, a year, and 1.6 million who are living with the effects of stroke. Hmm. But our research so shows that Afro Caribbean and African communities are more likely to uh, um, have a stroke than white communities. The hmm. reasons for this are not well known, so we, we don't know all the reasons. It is quite complex. Mm -hmm. But some of those reasons are maybe due to the fact that we know that high blood pressure is a major contributing factor to stroke for all people. So 50% of the strokes are due to high blood pressure. And people from a black and minority ethnic background are more likely to have high blood pressure than those from a white background. Um, this could be due to lifestyle factors. Yeah. It could be due, due to other, um, other reasons as well. Also, people from ethnic minority communities are more likely to have diabetes. So t type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes, what that does is, is, is narrow the arteries. Um, so yeah. that can cause the risk of a stroke as well. Um, so because ethnic minorities are more likely to have diabetes, they're more likely to develop the you know, um, stroke at a later stage. Mm -hmm. What we do know that within ethnic minority communities, uh, there is also a, a, a blood disorder called sickle cell. Now, sickle cell, what, that, um, what, what happens with sickle cell is you have um, sickle-shaped, hard red blood cells. And well, these... well, if you can explain it a little lower level what, what does that mean so the red blood cells instead of being round and smooth mm -hmm. they are sickle shaped and hard mm -hmm. so they tend to get stuck in the arteries and for those who uh, you know who are affected by sickle cell this is often called a sickle cell crisis it causes quite great pain mm -hmm. uh, when you know the, the blood sticks in the arteries with um, sickle cell uh, if that blood sticks in the the arteries connected to the brain, then that then a stroke will occur. So, mm. twenty four percent of those affected with sickle cell are more likely to have a stroke by the time they're forty five. And is stroke hereditary? Is it one of those hereditary diseases that you say in your family there's somebody who once had stroke, so you are prone to 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 have it? Anybody can have a stroke. It doesn't discriminate. Um, young people have a stroke, babies have strokes. Uh, we're finding that a third of people of working age now are having a stroke. Um, we tend to find, again, through our research, that mm -hmm. family members 
Um, you know, if, if a family member has had a stroke in the past, it, you know, other family members will have a stroke. We don't know whether that's due to hereditary conditions or whether it's the, the lifestyle of the family, you know, how they eat, you know, the, you know, the, the way they exercise and things like that. Um, and, and again, you know, through our research, we found that people from ethnic minorities are more likely to have a, a stroke, twice as likely than those from white communities. This could be to, through hereditary um, um, means, but we, we don't, we're not sh sure about that, really. Hmm. What we have found is that with um, ethnic minorities, they have a, a, a higher ratio between the waist and their hips. So this is the, the difference, you know, in, in the, the measurement between their waist and hips mm -hmm. is higher. Mm -hmm. This could be something to do with the, you know, the genetic makeup of, you know, um, people from ethnic minority backgrounds. But having that higher ratio does increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. So you mean um, if you are if you are if you are big, you you have uh, it increases the chances, or is it the issue of cholesterol? It's the, it's the, it's the ratio between the waist and the hip. So if it is higher, uh, you know, research has shown that there is a link to diabetes, heart heart disease, and stroke through that waist. That ratio. How how uh, can you reduce the risk of having a stroke? It's quite simple, really. I mean, the good news is, despite what I've said, 80% uh -huh. of the strokes out there can be reduced, and that's through uh, having a healthy lifestyle. So, firstly, for high blood pressure, um, making sure that you, um, you check your blood pressure regularly. Mm. Here at the Stroke Association, if you go on our website, uh, we do free blood pressure testing, and you can, if you tap in your, um, your postcode, you can find where you can have your blood pressure uh, done, done for free. And that helps us with our research. It helps us to know, you know um, what's going on out there, but also you know, gives a, a, provides a service for those who cannot get to their GP and have their blood pressure tested. Mm. So that's the most important thing. How, you know, obviously, um, looking at your diet, the way you eat, so we all know that we, if we eat five a day, have fibre and, you know, all of those different <laughs> things, you know, that yeah. helps us to be healthy. Yes. But in particular for ethnic minority communities, it's a reduction in salt. Mm. Salt you know, raises the blood pressure. So we have to, you know, look at the, the amount of salt that we eat. The recommended amount is six grams a day. So six grams is, is approximately a, a teaspoon and a half, which is not much. Yeah. Now you may think to yourself, you'll sit here and you'll say, I'm not adding salt to my food. I'm not, you know, you know adding too much salt. It's not the food that, it's not the salt that you add at the table. Uh -huh, it's the uh -huh. hidden salt that's in food. So you know, a lot of you know uh, processed meats has a lot of salt in it. Yeah, you know, a lot of the, you know these ready meals have a lot of salt content in there as well. Also, if you're cooking with um, pre-packed seasonings like jerk seasoning and things like oh, that, yes, yes. they contain a lot of salt. So when cooking, you need to make sure that you use natural you know herbs like coriander, mixed herbs, ginger, lemon. To, you know, to season the food as opposed to pre-packed seasonings. Again, on our website, we have um, a, a recipe book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for um, African and Afro-Caribbean communities, uh, which provides alternative uh, ways to you know, add flavour to meals without <laughs> the use of salt. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's please good download news. that that's on your website. You. Yes. yes. Um, also, uh, as well as, you know, obviously reducing salt and eating, eating healthily, um, it's also best to exercise regularly. Mm. So make sure you get at least 30 minutes exercise per day. It doesn't have to be rigorous exercise, just a walk or yoga, um, you know, things, you know, just light exercise every day to reduce the risk of stroke as well. And I don't have to tell you that bad habits like smoking and drinking alcohol increase the risk of a stroke. Mm. If you smoke, you're twice more likely to, you know, to have a stroke because what smoking does is damage the arteries. So, you know, you're, you're damaging the arteries. But also, it, it um, thickens the blood as well because it, it takes the valuable oxygen from the blood and thickens it. So it tends to clot in the mm. arteries, which can lead to a stroke. And there's this issue of... Um stroke and mini stroke yes well, what's the difference between the two is there is there any difference okay 
First of all, to, to recognise the sign of a stroke, we, we, mm. we've, we've come up with a, a simple method, which is our FAST um, method. Yeah. So for those who, who, you know, who are, experience a stroke, um, they may have a series of symptoms. Um, F for FAST is, is looking at the face. So if they you know, do they have a, you know, a facial weakness, or is there, can they smile, is there a droop in the face? Mm -hmm. If you see that, then that might be a sign that there's a risk of a stroke. Also, um, arms, if they're unable to raise both arms, then it may be that they're experiencing a stroke. And if they're able, unable to speak or communicate, so if they have slurred speech or unable to get words out or the words are coming out backwards, mm -hmm. um, it's like they may seem as if they're drunk, then that could be a sign of a stroke. And if you see one or any of those symptoms, then it's time to call 999. Okay. Now, occasionally those symptoms might occur for a short period of time. time. It's what we call a funny turn. So it might come and go um, in, say, 20 minutes, no longer than 24 hours. So when you have what, what, you know, what, what is a, a short uh, you know, um, burst of these symptoms, mm. that is called a TIA, a transient ischemic stroke. And um, that is what we call a mini stroke. Mini stroke. Yeah, so that's a mini stroke. And that is just as serious as a full-blown stroke, so that, you know, the, the kind of, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the fast mm -hmm. it's just mm. as serious. But because it comes and goes, a lot of people tend to ignore this and don't go to see their GP or a doctor. So if you, if you do see somebody experience, you know, any one of those symptoms, and it may be related to other things like a numbness in the arm or body mm -hmm. or a sudden dizziness, um, I don't know if anybody has seen uh, EastEnders recently. Mm -hmm. um, in EastEnders, uh, Rudolph Walker, who plays the character uh, Patrick, um, experienced a mini stroke so yes he you know he mm. was not feeling very well he just slightly collapsed but then he was better after that and he had a series of these mini strokes and then afterwards he had a full-blown stroke and within the series you, you you can see he's coping with the effects of a stroke and this has been mm. quite a significant story which has helped to raise awareness within all of our communities, not just the ethnic and minority communities, because everybody watches EastEnders. Oh, yeah. uh, so it's really good of the BBC to feature this, uh, you know, within their programming. Mm. Uh, and we've worked quite closely with the BBC to make sure they get the right messages out there. Mm, yeah. So if you do have a mini stroke, it's, it's just as important to call 999 or to see your GP. So apart from going to the GP, there's nothing you can do, like you say, that stroke is, uh, it could be the blood is becoming thick, uh, no shortcut of taking aspirin to thin no. the blood and all that uh, things. The best thing to do is to uh -huh. get um, medical help. help. Uh, with that, you know, the, the high blood pressure can be controlled with medication. So we're lucky in this country that we have access to good medication. You know, in other parts of the world, in our African diaspora, mm. they're not so lucky they don't have access to medication. Um, what we have found is sometimes people take herbal remedies mm -hmm. and you know as you know to, to kind of reduce their risk of high blood pressure and, and stuff like that which are quite potent and i'm not saying that you shouldn't take herbal remedies but sometimes you need to check that those herbal remedies do not counteract the the you know the the pharmaceutical medication that you've been prescribed well, you've been, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. so you know you have to be wary of how that you know how that happens mm -hmm. so so um but yeah the best thing to do is to seek medical seek advice medication. uh get the right medication to control your blood pressure eat healthily as i said get plenty of exercise and you know qu quit the smoking and <laughs> alcohol <laughs> yeah <laughs> would you call it the major or what's the stroke itself how how does it does it have the same symptoms as uh the ones which we had on fast and uh yeah. the after effects uh, are they the same as well what, yeah, I mean, what is the difference there Everybody who has a stroke has a range of different symptoms afterwards. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, you know, we've we've put a lot of work into prevention research as well to to minimise the risk of a stroke. Mm -hmm. Previously, a third of people used to die after having a full blown stroke. Those statistics have now come down. 
and you know and a, a, a lot more people are living with the effects of stroke so they could be severely disabled mm -hmm. and some people you know are, are hardly affected at all um, but it is a leading cause of disability across the UK mm -hmm. so so um, as, as a result as I said some people may have you know, serious effects on their bodily functions, unable to walk or, you know, move their arm. Um, but, you know, some may just have, you know, visual impairment or just, you know, minor symptoms after having a stroke. In case you have identified these um, uh, symptoms, facial Face, weakness, arms, arm weakness, speech, speech. problems, and uh, the person, before you call 999, the person just collapsed, is there anything which somebody who is close by advised to do before the medical team arrives? It, it's the best thing to do is to call 999. We've invested in a, a really good, you know, um, like sh stroke pathway. So as soon as that, you know, somebody has called 999, the emergency services know exactly what to do. So the best thing to do is to call 999. Mm. I've spoken to people in, within the community and they've called a friend, you know, they've, you know, they've driven, <laughs> they've, you know, driven themselves down to, you know, the accident and emergency. Mm. That's not the best thing to do. It, the best thing to do is, is just to call 999. Mm. And what are the possible uh, effects when you have stroke? Um, as I said, the possible effects after having a stroke could be death. It could be having a disability, such as you know, um, loss of your body functions, like your arm, um, you know, loss of speech, communication, aphasia, uh, which is you know the, the inability to communicate, is one of the most common effects having a stroke. So we have you know raised um, had campaigns to raise awareness of aphasia because often we find that people are discriminated within the community after having a stroke mm -hmm. when they go out you know um, to talk to people people think that they are either drunk or you lose patience in communicating with them so we try to raise awareness of the fact that a lot of stroke survivors suffer with aphasia um, after having a stroke is a stroke association um was 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 there in place for for, for those who, who have uh, the survivors yes well we we are a charity to start off with and a lot of the support we 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 give is only done through the donations we get from the public and through the support from our volunteers across the uk mm. but as a charity the main things that we have we, we have a website with a, a wide range of resources through our research on a, a range of you know conditions uh, associated with stroke so if you go to our website which is www.stroke.org.uk um, then you can download a lot of resources you know and, and support from there mm -hmm. also we have a helpline so we have a helpline that runs nine to five every day and our helpline gives valuable advice not only to stroke survivors but their family and friends as well we find that this the stroke does not just affect the person who's had a stroke, it affects mm -hmm. the family the members, whole family, yeah, yeah. the whole family and, and friends. So a lot of them will ring our helpline to get advice and support, you know, and, and to support their loved ones. Uh, as well as our um, helpline, we provide one-to-one -one support to stroke survivors. Mm -hmm. And we also have a network of stroke clubs and groups across the UK. Right. So these stroke clubs and groups provide... Um, rehabilitation support it provides you know mm -hmm. what we call life after stroke so that you know so it provides um, activities like gardening you mm -hmm. know and mm -hmm. sports and and exercise art therapy as well um, and so and these are run by our volunteers you know so we're, we're very lucky to have um, approximately 30,000 volunteers that help us with our stroke clubs mm -hmm. and groups across mm -hmm. the UK mm -hmm. And how do people access, uh, if they want to, to, to join a, uh, a group which is nearby, how do they go about it? Again, the best way is to go onto our website, tap in your postcode, so find stroke clubs and groups, tap in your postcode and you'll find the nearest stroke club and group uh. that's near to you. And we do have, uh, across the country, dedicated groups for ethnic minorities that are run by ethnic minority volunteers. So, you know, it might be worth checking out if there's one in your area. Mm -hmm. uh, stroke Association details will be right on the screen. So if you have a relative or yourself, you need um, 
to be part of them. You may not have a developed stroke, but you want to be a volunteer and work within the organization, help reduce the risk of stroke. Their details are right there on the screen. Kindly get in touch with them. Some of us might have watched, you know, an advert in regards to 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 stroke. Can we can we have some elaboration and in regards to that? Yeah, um, we did a lot of research into the um, the signs of a stroke, and we yeah. came up with the um, the message, the the fast campaign, um, yes. which is that the face, arm, speech, and time to call nine nine nine. And with that, we worked with the NHS to do a, a major campaign for the for fast to get that message out. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an advert where many of you might have seen it, where you see a lady who um, has fire coming out of her head mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to show the this attack on the brain due to a stroke. And you'll see the various symptoms where you know her her eyes drooping, her face is drooping. Um, and her speech becomes slurred, and she she, she tends to slump into the, into the chair. And this year, we we revised that campaign, and we've um, we've actually uh, um, reshot the the advert okay. uh, within a barber shop. Mm -hmm. So it features um, ethnic minority men within uh, a barber uh, shop yes. and an elderly um, a, a, a black man actually going through the signs of a stroke and that can be seen on YouTube if you want to um, look at it on YouTube. We, we have heard some experts speaking of um, sugar as well boys. I know we, we as Afro-Caribbeans are not much into salt so should we take sugar as an option? Um, no, obviously you need to. <laughs> sugar is, you know, is is deadly, and as I said, sugar can lead to type two diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, where you do, you know you develop a um, intolerance, you know, and you're not uh, creating enough insulin within the body, and this you know can make the body um, develop more glucose. So you need to reduce the amount of sugar that you're taking into the into the body. Uh, so yes, cut down on the sugar. So you know, um, and and things with high cholesterol as well. Mm. So the the fats and you know, um, fatty foods as also. Um, and I'm not saying that you can't enjoy your diet. It's just to you know to have things in moderation and make sure that you know you're sensible about your diet and and not taking in too much salt and too much sugar. As I said, salt is a major contrib contributing factor to mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And our research shows that high blood pressure is one of the main reasons why people from ethnic minority communities are you know, more likely to have a stroke across the UK. So reducing the risk of high blood pressure through reducing salt in your diet is, is the most effective way, as well as monitoring your blood pressure, making sure that you either go and have it tested test it yourself at home or visit a DGP. And in terms of gender, is uh, there any gender which is uh, more prone than, than the other, so it affects more female more than male? Again, you know, our, our research shows that women are, are quite likely to, to, to slightly develop for stroke more so than men. The reasons are unknown, like we can't, we cannot say. These, this could be due to, due to um, you know, hormonal contraceptions or HRT, as well as, as, well as other factors. Um, and as I said, the, the, the waist to hip ratio for black and minority ethnic women tends to be higher than, you know, those who are not from ethnic minorities. And that can, has proven to be a, a, a contributing factor towards stroke as well. Mm, and uh, is there any relationship between stroke and uh, stress? Do, do, uh, do stress, uh -huh. stress can increase your blood pressure. So um, when your blood pressure is, is raised, it, what blood pressure is measuring is the, the rate of the pressure of your blood you know, uh, 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 within the arteries, um, you know, when your heart is beating and when your heart is, is at, you know, at rest uh, in between the beats. So if that raises to over 140, which is what we call the systolic, mm -hmm. um, over 90, which is a diastolic, then you know that causes high blood pressure, and stress can raise that, um, but it's not it's not the only factor that raises high blood pressure. Mm. What information is available for people who want to find more about stroke? 
As I said, on our website, we have a wide range of um, leaflets, fact sheets um, and information about, you know, stroke and, and how to prevent it and various issues relating to the effects of stroke as well. We have dedicated resources for ethnic minority communities, which can mm. be downloaded on the website. This includes a fact sheet on how to reduce the risk of stroke, mm -hmm. as well as, as I said, a, a, a recipe book directed towards... More important, yes. that one, more important that one, before you get into the kitchen, make sure you have it. Absolutely. So a recipe book that, you know, directed to, towards, you know, to, to actually, you know... Um, reducing the salt within the diet and, and using mm. well-known recipes within our communities and replacing them with other you know replacing some of the ingredients with uh, more healthy alternatives mm. and and also um you know online you have access to um our helpline and support forums as well as you know access to uh, where your local stroke club and group is within your area we also run a, a lot of campaigns. So over the years, we, we, we've, we've run campaigns to support stroke survivors. Um, this could be to, to do with issues that sometimes the NHS and other professionals won't pick up. So, for example, the financial effect on stroke survivors, mm -hmm. because stroke can happen quite suddenly. Um, you know, you, you don't know it's going to happen. And as I said, a third of people of working age are experiencing a stroke um, right now. So this can have a devastating effect on, you know, um, your work, your family, mm. um, and obviously mm. have a, 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 a consequential effect on your finances. So we, we've done a lot of research and, and, and policy development into, you know, supporting stroke survivors once they've had a stroke and, you know, the financial impacts as well as the emotional impact and, and, and other things as well. Don, your last words to, to the viewers. Um, well, as I said, right, so reduce, make sure that you know your blood pressure, reduce the risk of stroke by uh, leading a healthy lifestyle, make sure you get 30 minutes of exercise, uh, cut down on alcohol and smoking, mm. reduce the salt in your diet, and, you know, and, and just make sure you have regular checks with your GP. If you do experience a mini stroke, don't ignore it. So this is, you know, when you have the, the signs of a stroke over a 24-hour period that comes and goes, or it could be a funny turn. Please do not ignore it. Call 999 or go and see your GP straight away. Tom, thank you very much yeah, for nice such an you. informative thank you for interview. Inviting us. Uh, what more shall I say apart from saying thank you to our viewers for giving us your precious possession, which is your time, and to our sponsors for this awareness campaign, Awards for All. Thank you very much. The Digging Deep Show, like I say, it would not dig deep, this deeper had it not been your support. For me and the rest of the team at the Digging Deep Show, we are signing out. Till we meet again, could this is my name? God bless you. Love you all.